Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I'm going to sit back, chillax, and dive deep into a new ripe Pua release. This is Jungle Starlet. This is our new ripe Pua tea. It started with After Party Enchanter, then we moved to Milk Float Nomad. And whilst all teas are different in their own right, this we see as part of that series of teas, these super high quality ripe Pua's with that creamy, rich texture, perfect for late night sipping and I am in desperate need for this session I have to say I was thinking about it just before I started filming it's there's so much noise outside of this studio as soon as this phone turns on it's just non-stop ringing uh, we've got uh, the clinic we've got the reopening of the tea house coming up which is a great thing but you know reorganizing staff reorganizing everything there making sure that we're ready for that we've got spring tea sourcing full-on spring tea sourcing tasting lots of sort of deals to be done and samples to be tasted it is just manic out there and so i'm so thankful that i can just come here shut the door tell everyone no disturbances for the next hour whilst i sit with you and taste teas and i'm so thankful that i can be able to do that so thank you very much for allowing me to do that right here we go this is jungle starlet let's quickly scope this tea this is a spring 2018 tea it was uh, fermented in 2018, so that wodoi process, that wet piling process was done in 2018, and then it was allowed to breathe and to uh, dissipate any mustiness, and in late 2020, it was pressed for us. This is from the cultivar, the Daiye Zhong variety. This is from Linsang province in Yunnan in China. The picking on this is a bud and young leaves. It's very, very bud heavy, as you'll have noticed with After Party Enchanter and Milk Float Nomad. Very fine picking, so it's bud heavy and the elevation's around 1,450 meters. Before we dive in, take a good look at the artwork, courtesy, of course, by my lovely wife, Celine. The little elephant, the jungle starlet. And our, our thought process behind this was that imagining like a, a jungle festival, like a, a crazy, amazing, wild jungle festival. For those of you who have done outdoor festivals before, raves or otherwise, you'll know that feeling late in the night or early in the morning when, uh, when you're just sort of chilling and, uh, and still vibing off the music. So we're imagining this this little baby elephant, maybe brought by their pet, by mummy and daddy elephant, um, and uh, just chilling in the hammock at this jungle festival. This is the jungle starlet. You can see ticker tape, pink ticker tape, sort of flying around. So carnival atmosphere. And we'll talk about the reason why we went with that kind of imagery as we get into the tasting. Let's open this tea up. I have tasted this tea already, so this is not my first time tasting it since it's arrived, um, but I have made sure I haven't tasted it for a good few weeks. Last time I tasted this was actually with some Mayleaf crew members in the tea house. Here you go, take a look at that. Let's take the paper away, put this to the side. So very, very bud heavy tea, as you can see here. Um, lovely sort of, um, deep raisin brown, mahogany brown uh, leaves, and then these um, copper sort of golden buds. Really, really nice uh, mix of tea here. Right, we're gonna dive in. Compression is lovely. It looks more compressed than it actually feels when you put the knife in or the pick in. And I'm actually gonna see if I can weigh this out. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Well, I'll tell you why now. This tea, from my recollection, is a very, very rich tea. And I wanna get like, I wanna nail it. I don't wanna overdo it because whilst nothing wrong with overdoing it, I just, I, I know how rich it can get. So this is a 10.95 grams. So I'm brewing in a 150 mil guy one. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. I'm gonna go for something like about 10 grams of tea. Um, that's still pushing it a little bit, but hey. As I say, always thankful for these sessions. I can uh, switch my phone off and just tell everyone not to disturb me. And that's a, uh, that in itself is an absolute luxury. 
And this is what tea should be, isn't it? Tea should be your ability to, well, one of the things that tea can give you. Obviously you can drink tea during the day whilst you're working, but one, one of the great things about tea, as we know, is its ability to just transport you into the present and allow you to just dial down the noise. Jungle Starlet, we'll put that to the side here. And we're gonna heat our teaware up. I'm going into the classic Blue Guy one. I would love to bring out clay when I'm doing these tastings, but you know, I'm very conscious of making sure that the, the tasting that I do with you, uh, this tasting where I'm building up my tasting notes is in glazed as much as possible. I have broken that rule um, occasionally, but uh, yeah, I just wanna make sure that we do that. And as I said, I have tasted this tea before, but I've not really tried to dive too deep into the, the tasting notes. I just wanted to make sure it was the, the same quality and I have not been disappointed. Let's uh, warm everything up. Let's do this properly. Okay, now I'm gonna crumble this tea into the guy one. As I said, my recollection of this tea when we tasted the uh, when we tasted it last year in sampling was oh my gosh it's it's creamy and it's and it's um, luxurious and decadent but the richness of it the sort of the d density of the of the liquor was what really like uh, that was that extra. Um, uh, cherry on top of the cake. We would have bought it anyway because of the taste, but wow, the texture and the richness. And that's why I'm just being a little bit more sort of uh, conservative and making sure that I don't overfill the guy one because it can get very, very rich. Here you go. Cat gets some water. All right, here we go. Clear the airways and we're gonna dive into this. Mm. A freshness comes through, which uh, is what's sort of surprising me because I remember it being very deep and rich, but there's a, there is a freshness there as well. Mm, and a creaminess. Um, so let's deal with the, the creaminess. So we're, we're having the, the classic uh, characters of a really well ripened uh, pua with lots of buds. So I'm getting uh, malts, I'm getting um, uh, like whipped cream, malted creams, malted milks, I'm getting uh, walnuts. Um, there is there is a slight uh, um, milky chocolate note to it, but it's, it is very light. But it's this freshness that I'm getting out of it that I'm really impressed with. Um, and I'm just trying to sort of, it's not fruity, it's not floral. It has a sort of linen uh, quality, like a, like a, um, a a slightly cottony fresh note to it, like like um, like laundry, but it is obviously light because it is a deep, rich tea. But I would sort of equate it to, uh, and this is sort of just a visual imagery, that sort of the smell of like a, a, a um, clean bed sheets, but the morning after, like when you when they're sort of warm with body heat. It's sort of got that, um, yeah, it's clean bed sheets, but not straight out of the laundry. It's, it's, it's allowed to um, have warmed up with, with body heat. And it, it's just a, a, a lovely sort of um, sprinkling of freshness over the top. Okay, here we go. Give this a rinse. This has been, as I say, resting since 2018. So it's had over two years of resting not a trace of f funky fishiness. So no worries there. Okay, smell of the wet leaf. Mmm, vanilla bourbon. Just, oh. Got an alcoholic tinge to it, vanilla bourbon. Perfect. 
Oh, do I need to say more? It's vanilla bourbon, like sugary, slightly charred, vanilla-y. Um, malt is still there. I am getting more fruit. I am getting raisins, so we could move into the malt loaf territory. So, uh, yeah, malty, sticky, sweet, vanilla bourbon malt loaf. And the walnuts, they've more moved into a little bit more of a, a cleaner nutty note. That sounds weird, but like a, a lighter nutty note, a fresher nutty note. Maybe Brazil nuts. Yeah. Mm. Vanilla bourbon, um, raisins, malt loaf, and Brazil nuts. Okay, let's get the temperature up on this. We're gonna brew at 99 degrees, so pretty much boiling. And we are going to be brewing 20, 25 seconds. Let's see how dark it gets. Maybe I'm being a bit over, uh, over conservative here, but I do remember that this just gives you such an incredibly rich uh, brew. And that's sort of why we, we put the jungle, this sort of dense, rich jungle uh, in there. That's uh, one of the reasons why we did that. When we tasted the Malcha, we were so impressed with the body of it. Okay, here we go. Let me quickly rinse this. And I probably will go through a filter, at least on this first infusion. I hope that everyone out there is doing well, that you are using tea to escape the noise yourself. Plenty of noise out there, overload of noise. And that's one of T's great, great characteristics is its ability to allow you to focus in, find the taste, draw your mind and quiet the noise. All right, it's about 20 odd seconds. Yeah, that looks about perfect to me. You can see how dense for a first infusion, how deep and dark that is, I'll quickly bring it to the camera. Mm. It sort of has um, a black coffee, you know, really deep black coffee sort of uh, look to it, but with a little bit more of an orange tinge to it, I would say around the edges, just around the highlights, you can see those sort of orange notes. I am very, very excited about this one. Drinking out of one of our new cups, new in stock. This green crackly glaze on it. Okay, cheers everybody. Seeing lots of little micro bubbles floating on the top. Cheers everybody, body first. This is what's so impressive about this tea. Short infusion relatively with, you know, okay, 10 grams is, is a nice luxury amount, but the texture on it is so thick, so velvety, so smooth. Dense, rich. I mean, when I say dense, I really mean like you feel like, um, yeah, it, it has to be more than tea. It has a really thick syrupy texture, but not sticky. After you swallowed, it's, it's lubricating, um, oily, soft, um, coating. It seems to sort of get into all of the, the little crooks and crannies in your mouth, you know, and just lubricate your whole mouth. It is a, a, a remarkable uh, mouth texture. Mm. Incredible, that lubricating sensation in the mouth. So, so much like a, a standout character of this tea. Mm. I just wanna focus on that, but I will move on to taste. 
which is sublime. Um, <clears throat> creaminess is there. And when I say creaminess, I really mean creaminess. It has like a, uh, again, there's a, there's a freshness to this tea, which is so, uh, which is so great, like a, um, a whipped cream, just like a really lovely, f light, fluffy, whipped cream creaminess to it. Um, and then the malt loaf has shifted into like, um, I remember when I was tasting it um, about a month or so ago with Celine, we were saying that it reminds us of Garibaldi biscuits, which uh, if you don't know, are like little layered um, uh, biscuits, sweet biscuits with tiny little currants, like very dark currants in. And it really has that quality of, it's got that biscuity um, warmth and slight breadiness to it, but then it also has this very um, rich, again, dense um, raisin sweetness to it. Oh, it's such a special tea. I'm getting uh, the, the walnuts are back. Um, and again, the chocolate is there as well. So like walnut chocolate brownies, but that's the, that's the, uh, the, um, the supporting role. The main role is this creaminess and um, biscuitiness and, and fruitiness with this little sort of nutty chocolate undertone. And then this freshness of, of whipped cream on top. It is such a delicious tea. And the mouth texture, I'm sorry I keep going on about it, is the way that it, 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 it it's like, uh, how can I describe this without it seeming uh, off-putting, but it's like you're, you're like oiling a machine, you know how it just sort of, the, 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 the lubrication just fills in all the gaps and it feels like everything in my mouth is, is so, so lubricated and, uh, and slippery not sticky, slippery and soft. Mm. Specialty. Mm. Second infusion. I could just down this and I already know I've been resisting, resisting and resisting uh, breaking this tea because I don't really want to start to build up too many flavor notes around it. So I've probably tasted this since it came in, probably tasted this three times total. Um, but I have been resisting because every time I'm just like, oh, I just want more of this tea. But I've had plenty of spring teas to taste, so plenty to occupy myself with. Right, let's try an unfiltered brew and see how that goes. There's something that is different about this production technique and I sort of need to understand it a little bit more at least I think so, to bring about this, this sort of next level texture. Um, and I wonder now how it's gonna be unfiltered. So that was a similar infusion time to the first infusion, maybe even a bit shorter, and you can see how deep the color of the liquor is. Let that cool for a bit, and just stick my nose in here again. See if I can tease out any other notes. Mm. That jungle. Um, so you know how a lot of ripe poetries people talk about that um, forest floor, uh, you know, earthiness and like, m like mossiness. This doesn't have that, but it has like a like you've, you've, you're slightly higher, you're in the foliage, you're in the, the foliage that's being shown here, you know? It, it has a, 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 a humid jungle, um, uh, dewy leaves and, and a little bit of, of this sort of um, the jungle floor, but not really, you know, it's, 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 it's remarkably fresh considering the depth of the color. And with that comes some sort of like herbaceous notes. 
even moving into things like like a, a hint of rosemary or a hint of um, bay leaf, you know, those kinds of quite bright, uplifting, invigorating, herbaceous uh, aromas, they're there in the background, but they just sort of add these details over the whole sort of image of this tea that just make it sparkle. And maybe that's what I meant before when I was talking about that sort of clean linen note to it. And then you drink it and it's soft, rich, creamy, oily, and whipped cream is, is like, like whipped cream on top of a, of a, of a chocolate brownie. Um, again, I don't want to overstate the chocolate, but the, the richness and fudginess of that with that raisiny sweetness. Okay, I am going to pause. I'm going to drink through probably three, four, five infusions so that we can get a good sense of the body sensation and we'll go through the smell of the empty Gong Dao Bay. This is the fourth infusion and the texture is the same and it's just got so much to give this tea. The taste has remained pretty consistent very, very creamy. I note after I've swallowed, after it's laid down um, a few infusions on my tongue, I'm getting like a slight, um, as if I've taken a little dab of salted butter, like really high quality salted butter, and just sort of put it in my mouth and allowed it to melt. It has this um, creamy lubricating note, but there's a sort of buttery richness and a slight saltiness, which I really, really love. It makes you want to dip in again. There is very, very little dryness to this tea. In fact, hardly any at all. It's all about the sort of um, smooth, soft, lubricating nature of it. Mm. And the body sensation. I can tell you um, is, is something that you are going to really enjoy. It's very, very um, uh, awakening, but not in a rushy, uh, caffeinated way. It feels like this is the, the kind of tea that you would have really long, deep conversations with uh, someone uh, over, or a great tea to sort of sit and have during your day to just keep you in that sort of tea lifted state of uh, creative thinking and um, yeah, just seeing things from slightly different angles. This feels like it's a very uh, mind um, altering, uh, but in a sort of clear and uh, you know how sometimes when you're saying something like it just comes out in exactly the right uh, phrasing or the right sequence of words and it just everything becomes easier. It feels like it's that kind of body sensation where I could have very long, deep conversations um, or I could sit and think or be creative with this tea. Definitely something that you could drink throughout the day um, and if you're going to drink this at night, do not expect that you're going to want to go to sleep. Um, it certainly is one as I said, it's not about the caffeine so much, but it, it definitely is sort of awakening the mind. And um, I love those kinds of teas. That for me is like after party enchant. It was like that after party feel. Um, and uh, this one is exactly the same, which is why we <clears throat> put the elephant in a festival. And the idea was that it was going to be sort of um, early hours, you know, three in the morning, something like that in the festival, the parents are still partying, the elephant, the little baby elephant is sort of dozing, um, but the music is playing in the background and he's just pop, he or she is just popping his or her head up, just checking out the action at the festival. So our, our sort of feeling of when we were drinking the sample was, this is gonna be a great sort of wee hours sipper. And the smell of the empty Gong Dao Bay, Okay, I'm getting that, ooh, I'm getting that uh, bourbon note, still sort of uh, um, caramelized sugars, very deeply caramelized sugars. 
but I'm also getting a, a yeastiness, like, a, like the smell of rising dough. But very um, rich and deep, like whole wheat. Very sort of whole wheat, yeah, that's it. Whole wheat, rising dough, deep caramelized sugars, and again, whipped cream. That theme of whipped cream is just, um, is just continuing. Take a look at these leaves. You can see this uh, glossy, again, sort of deep, rich, mahogany brown, rosewood brown colored leaves. They've got so much to give. You're gonna get 12 plus, 15 plus infusions out of this. Perfect for the full day of sipping and for your late night sippers through to the early hours. I am going to be brewing this tea throughout the day whilst I edit this video so it can get online tomorrow. If you like these kinds of creamy, rich, deep, smooth, lubricating choupoes with a distinct mind invigorating and mind altering effect, then you definitely need to pick this one up. This is definitely gonna be your jam. You may wanna pick up a tong. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.